So, how do dinosaurs become fossils? And what is a fossil anyway? Hello and welcome to the Natural History of Dinosaurs. My name is Benjamin Berger and in this lecture at Utah State University we'll explore how to fossilize a dinosaur. Fossils are evidence of once living organisms, including plants and animals. These organisms lived before the last glacial period, around 11,700 years ago, or prior to the modern Holocene epoch. Remains of life since the last glacial period or within the Holocene are sometimes referred to as subfossils. Bones of subfossils are often not lithified and appear to resemble modern bone, whereas older true fossils have been lithified into rock through the chemical alteration by a process called diagenesis. And this takes about 10,000 years or longer. Many organisms can become fossils, including leaves, bones, shales, and other hard parts of once living organisms. Even traces left behind, such as tracks, impressions, trails, and borings can be fossilized. Most fossils are found in sedimentary rock, but some can be preserved in amber, or sealed up in caves, or preserved in volcanic ash. There are two main types of fossils, body and trace fossils. Body fossils include the remains of organisms that were once living, and trace fossils are the signs that those organisms were present. Things like footprints, tracks, trails, and even boop. Most fossils are not dinosaurs. In fact, dinosaurs are a very tiny number of fossils that have been found. Most fossils are evidence of other life forms, such as plants and other animals, such as sea creatures. Dinosaurs are a small group of around 700 species of ancient creatures that we'll explore in detail in this course. So in a sense, fossils are clues left behind that a particular organism once lived on Earth, in much the same way as clues are left behind in a detective story. Now, not all the organism will be present, obviously, but clues can enable paleontologists to reconstruct the organism from really fragmentary fossilized remains. So, how do you make a fossil dinosaur? First, you need a dinosaur, and then you gotta kill that dinosaur. Throughout the lifespan of the dinosaur, it will leave behind evidence that it once lived. Now, since dinosaurs are not building houses or constructing giant monuments or even leaving behind garbage, they left behind mostly footprints and, well, poop. Fossil poop, once it's fossilized, is called a coprolite. Now, these remains can get buried and fossilized into rock, but dinosaur coprolites are a bit more rare than dinosaur footprints and must be identified by key criteria. Now, Dr. Karen Chin at the University of Colorado is the leading expert on coprolites, and she's developed three criteria for the identification of coprolites. The first is phosphate rich. Poop has a lot of phosphate, which is lost by the animal. In fact, your poop has lots of phosphate too, and phosphate makes poop a great fertilizer. In fact, most commercial fertilizer is made of either modern or fossilized poop. Shape. Does it have that uh, unique shape that makes it look like poo? You know, that little swirly thing on top. Hmm. And the third criteria, the presence of bones within the poop. This is particularly good if the dinosaur was a meat eater, but hard to explain if you are a plant eater. Now this brings up uh, an important question in dinosaur paleontology. Does dinosaur pee fossilize? Well, several paleontologists have claimed that they have found fossil dinosaur pee. These they call urolites, or liquid traces. Now, these traces are a bit controversial as whether they really represent places that dinosaurs did in number one. But it does make you look a little more carefully, I guess, at rocks when you find that strange indentation in them. Now, fossilized footprints of dinosaurs and trackways are much more common, and they tell you a great deal about how dinosaurs moved around the Earth. In fact, when scientists first found dinosaur footprints, they thought they were actually ancient birds. Now, today there are a number of dinosaur specialists that only study dinosaur footprints. 
Paleontologists that study trace fossils are called ichnologists, and trace fossils are called ichnofossils. Ichno is Greek for trace or footprint. So here's an example of my own fossilized ichnofossil. This is a handprint here that I made when I was six years old out of uh, plaster in kindergarten. And it shows, you know, how much I've grown uh, since then. Now, to make this a true fossil, I've just got to sit around and wait for 10,000 years before it becomes a true fossil. Right now, it's just a sub-fossil of me. Um, so I guess this video is probably not long enough for 10,000 years. Oh, well. But what we want to fossilize is a dinosaur. To have a, a body fossil, the skeleton, the hard parts preserved so we can throw it into a museum. All right, so the first step is we have to have the dinosaur die. Step one, the death of a dinosaur. The most destructive step toward fossilization happens in the few days after the dinosaur dies. First, the soft tissue, such as the intestines and organs, begin to rot. And during this process, the bones can become displaced. Now, once exposed to sunlight, the bones begin to splinter and desiccate, and they become very fragile. Teeth will fall out of the skull and jaws. And of course, there are scavengers who are going to carry off the meaty portions and break the bones to get at the marrow inside. It's very common for a skeleton to become disarticulated or disassembled very quickly after death. Step two, burial. One way to prevent the disarticulation of the skeleton is rapid burial. This means that the dinosaur gets buried in sediment that is naturally transported either by wind, such as blowing sand in a desert, or by water, such as in a river or lake. Some dinosaurs have actually been found in marine sediments that have been swept out at sea and buried deep underwater. Now the process of burial will limit the disarticulation of the skeleton. Although the dinosaur can continue to decompose even after burial, the bones will then likely stay in place if they're buried all at once. One of the most remarkable discoveries is the articulated bones of a velociraptor and protoceratops preserved in the Gobi Desert of Mongolia. It's discovered by Polish paleontologists in 1971, and the two dinosaurs are locked uh, together in the same pose as how they died. The Velociraptor has its hand trapped in the tightly shut jaws of the Protoceratops, while the sickle claw of the Velociraptor has inviscerated the belly of the Protoceratops. Now researchers first discovered the top of the Protoceratops' skull, which eroded away unfortunately. But as they dug down into the rock, they uncovered this deadly battle preserved over 80 million years ago. Now, one of the reasons that these dinosaurs were preserved in such incredible detail is that they were rapidly buried in blowing sand, or at least on the lee side of a sand dune. Step three, diagenesis. Most of the body of the dinosaur is made up of organic compounds composed of chains of carbon and hydrogen, with other elements mixed in, as well as lots of water. With heat and pressure, water is lost from the body and the carbon and the hydrogen start to break apart, forming smaller chemical molecules, such as methane, and other short chains of carbon-hydrogen molecules. In the presence of oxygen, these molecules will combust or oxidize and quickly be destroyed. But at depth in the subsurface, lacking oxygen, carbon molecules can migrate through the pore space of the rock. But more rarely, these organic molecules will remain behind. Carbon films are often found in non-porous shales when animals die or are buried in lakes and marine settings that have low oxygen values. Bacteria is also needed for fossilization, since they break down these carbon molecules for food and replace the tissue with inorganic minerals such as hematite and calcite. Bone and teeth are made of harder material. Bone is calcium sodium hydroxyapatite mixed with organic collagen. As groundwater moves through these harder remains of the buried dinosaur, these harder tissues like bone will slowly dissolve away, while the cavity that they occupy will be replaced with calcite at lower temperatures or silica at higher temperatures, often at deeper depths. This process is called pyramidization, the infilling of the bone space with new minerals. 
Now, bone can be completely replaced by new minerals, leaving only the form behind. Molds are the impressions of these hard parts, whereas casts are the objects made by the infilling of the molds of various minerals, often calcite or silica. These objects resemble the original bone. There is considerable debate among dinosaur paleontologists on the preservation of soft tissue within some dinosaur remains. Protein has been extracted from a preserved claw or a nail bed uh, keratin of a Cretaceous dinosaur from Madagascar, but no DNA so far has been discovered from a Mesozoic dinosaur. Many news stories of preserved soft tissue are often later disproven, such as the supposed fossil heart announced a few years ago. Mary Swetzner and other researchers in Montana have discovered flexible fibers or vessels in demineralized dinosaur bones. And a number of researchers have found proteins in bones, in structures that resemble osteocysts. Those are the cells that help grow the bone. So some of these complex protein molecules can stick around for millions of years. Teeth are the hardest part of dinosaurs and often preserve without premineralization. Enamel is a more pure crystalline lattice structure of calcium sodium hydroxyapatite with less carbon molecules than we see in bone. Hence, enamel found in dinosaur teeth is often the only original tissue preserved of a dinosaur. Now, you may have heard about dinosaur mummies like this amazingly well-preserved fossil of Edmontosaurus discovered in Canada. These uh, fossils appear to have skin, much like you would see in mummies from Egypt. Now, the biggest difference is that this skin is actually the cast of the original cavity that the dinosaur remains occupied. Uh, the original material has been replaced by diagenesis with replacement minerals and other sediment. Hence, the skin and other parts that make this dinosaur look like a preserved mummy is the cast made from a mold. A similar preservation of cast can be found in human remains from Pompeii. When volcanic ash preserved a cast of a person killed over 2,000 years ago. Now it's important to remember that most fossils have been significantly altered over the millions of years that they have been buried. Step four, discovery. Most dinosaurs will remain underground to be buried so deep that they eventually melt under the intense heat of the Earth's interior, or they emerge on the surface through geologic uplift, only to erode away forever, never to be seen by a human. Both amateur and professional paleontologists search rocks of the right age for dinosaur bones, and only a very few, very, very few, will be in the right place at the right time to be collected and studied. There are two ways in which dinosaurs are collected in the field, either through surface collection, finding the bones eroding out on the surface, or in a quarry where the bones are still within the rock and must be chiseled out. The fossilization process is a risky game, and most dinosaurs are never discovered by science. All right, after watching this video, you should be able to define the various steps and terminology of the fossilization process.